So, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, what's going to happen today is we have Miss Linda today. She's going to read a really great story. And then we're going to be doing a craft for that story. And she will kind of direct us once the story's done about what the uh, possibilities are. They are endless. They are bottomless like the ocean, our theme this year. Um, for our reading logs and our coloring sheets, Anything that the kids are turning in, we need to have by Friday, because Monday is here already. Monday is our reward day with our reward picnic, as well as our concert at 1 o'clock. So the reward picnic starts at 12. Uh, if you have any items that you would like to bring, there's a sign-up sheet at the counter there. And then we will also give out rewards after the picnic. And then we will have the concert at 1, and the concert is open to everybody, of course. Um, so... If you have any questions, let us know, but Monday, we're done already. This summer's going fast. So, Miss Linda, you have a wonderful story for us, and you've got quite a group of kids around you. Are they okay where they're at, or did you need to come back? They're perfect. And anybody back there, if you want to come forward, come forward so you can see the pictures. I'll try to hold the milk up high for everybody to see. How many of you, raise your hand if you've heard of Cow Cow Fish. Cow Cow Fish. This is one of our favorite stories. This is the very first book we read when my kids were little. Uh, one of my friends recommended it. And the neat thing is it has a verse. In the Pout Pout Fish books, there's a verse, you have a story, and then it'll repeat the verse throughout. So the main story with the Pout Pout Fish is he's kind of sad looking, isn't he? And the verse is, I'm a Pout Pout Fish with a Pout Pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Look. <laughs> Spoiler alert, in the back. turns his frown upside down and he gets happy. So it isn't a sad book. So if you've never read Pout Pout Fish, start with this one, okay? But today we're going to be reading The Pout Pout Fish Cleans Up the Ocean because we have an ocean theme for our library program this year. And let's see if you can figure out what the verse is. I'm gonna ask some questions as we go along. by Deborah Dyson. The ocean is amazing. Mr. Fish's grin was wide. The beautiful surroundings left him wonderstruck inside. How many of you have been to the ocean? A few of us have. It's pretty amazing. It's a lot different than our area, isn't it? His head was full of happy, and his heart was full of awe. But his smile sank away when he turned around and saw a big, big mess. He's not happy. Whatever could it be? But he couldn't really tell. So he talked with a friend who had noticed it as well. There's a problem that needs solving, and I don't know what to do, but I'm going to find some answers. Would you like to join me too? Do you think his friend's going to join him? Yeah, let's hold. Oh, let's see. Absolutely, said Miss Shimmer. As she grabbed a few supplies, they traveled to the mystery mess and see with their own eyes. Swimming off, they were enchanted by the ocean big and bright. But looming in the distance was that dark and dismal sight. A big, big mess. Yes, a big, big mess. What's it made of, they both wondered, as they pondered this out loud. Around them, others gathered in a small but growing crowd. There's a problem that needs solving, and we don't know what to do. But we're going to find some answers. Would you like to join us too? Count us in, said Mr. Seahorse as he powered up his rig. Enthusiasm bubbled. Yes, the group was getting big. They jetted through the ocean in a peaceful sort of bliss. But the thing that stretched before them was impossible to miss. A big, big mess, right? <laughs> Who will fix it, fish were asking, hoping someone else would know. 
There was a lot of conversation as they traveled with the flow. There's a problem that needs solving, and we don't know what to do. But we're going to find some answers. Would you like to join us, too? All is one, said Mrs. Squid, as she swished away some junk. The group continued forward toward the nearing pile of gunk. They reached the mystery mess. They took measurements and samples. They made notes and they did research. They found similar examples. When everyone was finished, they assembled to discuss. They came to one conclusion. The problem is us. Uh-oh. We made the big, big mess. They froze in disbelief. Then they all began to shout, feeling troubled and uneasy. Some began to pout. Were they stuck with this forever? Would it worsen? Would it grow? Mr. Fish was worried too. But there's one thing that I know. It's awful that we caused it. But this bad news can be good. For it means that we can solve it. If we all agree, we should. Silence filled the ocean. Their future was at stake. It was a moment of decision. But which one would they make? A big, big yes. We can do it, they exclaimed, positively, yes and yup. So they all pitched in together, and they cleaned the ocean up. They gathered up the garbage with the help of everyone. They worked to fix and remedy the damage that they had done. Then they talked about new habits, how to travel with less trace, and reduce their use of plastic, and put trash in its place. Problems have solutions. So we learn what we can do. Together, we're the answer. Would you like to join us too? Maybe. Maybe. So let's think about this big, big mass. What do you think is in the ocean? Trash and oil and stuff. I saw another hand. What else? Soil. Yep, there's sand and soil. The problem is, when our garbage ends up in the ocean, it affects other, other animals, other creatures in the ocean. Think about your rooms at home. Do you ever have a big, big mess in your room? Yeah. Is it easy to find things? Is it easy to move around? No. When we have a big, big mess at home, it makes it hard to do the things we need to do. And if our garbage is ending up in the ocean, all of those animals that live there have a hard time moving around and they have a hard time finding food. So we need to figure out what to do. And in the back of this book, if you're interested in learning more, it gives questions that you can research with your parents, with the librarians, with teachers, to figure out how you can make a difference with animals. Some people think they're ugly, but I think they're cute. And they can get really big. Uh -huh. Do you have a question? You think they're cute too? Good. I'm glad I have a buddy who thinks they're cute. But did you know that crabs have really soft bellies? So they take the shells of snails and they make those their homes. Look at this creature. Lobster. Kind of looks like a lobster. Kind of looks like a crayfish. It is a shrimp. If you can read, you can see it says a peacock mantis shrimp. It's got the colors of a peacock. It's got wiggly round eyes that rotate around. It's really bizarre, isn't it? In the ocean, there are all kinds of really cool creatures. Creatures that only our imaginations could think of. Let's look at a different one. Look at that one. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So this book is full of all kinds of animals, and I'm going to encourage you to look at some of the ocean books. Why is there a spider in the water? Why is there a spider in the water? 
your guess is as good as mine. Maybe we need to read it. But if we take the time to read about all these creatures, we won't have time to make a creature of our own. So we're going to keep moving, but you can see this book. If you'd like to borrow it from the library, you can borrow it. I took a picture on my phone because I didn't have time to print it out. But let's see if you can see this. Those of you who are closer, can you see that? What does it look like? Peacock. Kind of looks like a peacock. What else does it look like? Broccoli. Broccoli? <laughs> yeah. It kind of looks like a an air plant or a what? I, my mind just went like, celery. Celery? Oh, I was thinking more of like a succulent, like a little cactus. But look at its face. What does its face look like? Oh, an animal? It looks like yeah. an animal. It looks like a cow. Yeah. It kind of looks like a cow or a sheep. It looks like a jellyfish. That little like animal that. is called the leaf sheep. It kind of looks like a plant and it kind of looks like an animal. Isn't that amazing? There are so many creatures in the world, especially in the bottom of the ocean, that we've never seen. So today, I'm going to challenge you to create an ocean animal that nobody has ever seen, and then you get to take your little animal buddy, your ocean buddy home to remind you that we need to do things to clean up the ocean. Now, you're saying, I live in the mountains in Tioga County, in the middle of Pennsylvania. I'm nowhere near an ocean. Well, guess what? Sometimes our garbage ends up in the ocean anyway, even though we're far, far away from the ocean. One of the things that I do, instead of using disposable water bottles, you'll see me, every library program, I've got two of these. And this is what I drink my water out of. I don't drink water out of disposable bottles. The other thing is, I don't buy coffee at a store with a disposable cup. If you see me carrying one of my ceramic mugs, you know I've got my coffee in it or my tea. So that's one thing that I do. Um, I wanted to see how much garbage that I throw away. And you know your big garbage bags? It takes me two weeks to fill a garbage bag. And that's only three quarters of the way full. But after a while it gets kind of stinky, so we got to take it away, right? <laughs> so I'm going to challenge you to see different ways that you can change what you're doing to reduce the amount of garbage that you put out. I promised to show you a few of you a surprise. So if we look in here, you want to sit down so everybody can see? The last time I went to the beach, I brought home some buddies. So we have, do you want to tell them their names, Josh, or do you want me to? Are you able, Miss Linda, to come maybe around to the people? Yeah, okay. So if you stay seated, she's going to come around to you guys. This one is Java. Java? Java, like Java the Hot, because when I set up his terrarium, he was the first to go into the little hut. Now, if you're quiet, he'll probably come out and say hello. But they're very... Even though they're, they've got hard pinchers and hard legs, they're very afraid of people. He's used to me, so if I hold him in my hand, he'll kind of crawl around so that you can see him. But if you move quickly or talk loud, he'll probably go right back in his shell. Very shy, so you need to keep it quiet and calm. Crabs love to climb, and they're not native to our area. They like warm, humid climates. So if you ever get a hermit crab at the beach, I had two. They don't like the little cages that they give you at the beach because they're not humid, and they don't have enough room for them to crawl. So I mm. set up a terrarium for my hermit crabs. Okay. What's that? And little feelers. Got kind of buggy eyes. We're gonna put Java back in the cage. I'll introduce you to the other two. They're a 
little shyer. They don't like to come out. This one's Toby, and this one's Scooby. Scooby likes to climb high. So if if I put them back in their cage, he might climb on the side. I'm going to ask you not to touch the cage, but I'll put them over here on the shelf and you can peek at them. They love to hide under the moss. It's kind of cold in here. They like it warm, so they hide under the moss because it's damp and they can get the moisture out of the moss, but it's also a little warmer. I have, yeah, you see him, and he's my active one. <laughs> he likes to climb and be active. So as long as you promise not to tap on the cage, because we don't want to scare them. Oh, Toby's pinching me. <laughs> Let's get him off. Toby is not friendly. Toby gets scared. There we go. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to reach in the cage. The two long ones are very friendly and they climb all over, but Toby, for some reason, he doesn't like to be touched. So he'll pinch me. He pinches me when I pick him up. <laughs> all right, guys, so let's talk about our crash. Okay, I'm going to move my things out of the way. Um, when we get ready to do the, the craft, I'm going to have everybody move back and we're going to slide the tables out so you can go around. So I brought. shells so you'll get to pick a shell or if you pick the little scallop shells you can do two if you want to make a critter that lives in a shell you're going to get this is the important part guys because I'm going to explain the different craft supplies and all of the possibilities that you can do with them so you're going to get a paper plate you're going to put your shell on your paper plate, and then you're going to use your paper plate to get your different supplies. We have some model magic. This is way too much clay. You don't need a whole bag full of it. All we need is about a ping pong size. And Mr. Ben will help the kids with the clay, yeah. so he can give them the, the clay. That, and then if they need more, they can come back once everyone has had a chance art teacher and I know some people love clay and other people are like oh icky that doesn't feel good so if you don't like how this feels then you don't have to use this I'll show you some examples where we used clay and some where we didn't um, but it's you can squish it you can poke things into it like an eyeball you can if you don't like the wiggle eyes you can use beads as eyes you can use pipe cleaners and you can poke things into it and then string beads on top of it. We've got lots of things you can do with clay. Now we have a red brown clay, an orange brown clay, tan, they're all very natural colors, and then we have white. Once the clay is dry, you can use paint or markers to color it. We won't have time to do that today. That's why you're getting a paper plate. You can carry it home. And then um, if you don't have markers or paint at home, I brought in a box of markers. And you feel free, you can take one marker, maybe two. We don't have a lot of people here today. So you can take a couple markers home with you. And they are washable. So if they get it off your clothes or Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about our supplies. All of our supplies can be cut with scissors. So I'll be passing, if you could sit in little groups of three or four, we'll pass out scissors that you can use. I've got straws. The straws, you can tap into the clay to make little circle imprints. You can cut the straws to any length that you want. So if you look at this crazy creature, I didn't finish him yet. We were just playing around. 
I put straws into the clay and then I bent some wire because I love the creatures that trick their prey with the little floating things that look like worms or look like seaweed and they trick the fish to come in close and then they eat them. <laughs> and anglerfish is a good example. Good job. Um, my son made this one. He used his clay to make a shark body and then he used some popsicle sticks that he cut up to make fins and then he used two of the scallop shells to make the front. Um, and he used a pipe cleaner. Did he use a big full long pipe cleaner? No, not for the little tongue. He just needed a little piece. So he bent it and then he cut it. You can cut the pipe cleaners with scissors as well. Now I'm going to caution you. Raise your hand if you've used if you've never used a pipe cleaner before. Have you guys used pipe cleaners before? Okay, so you know that the ends have wire. They're pokey. So um, parents, grandparents, friends, adult friends, if you have someone who's tiny and they want to use a pipe cleaner, I would take the tip and bend it in tight so it's it's not pokey. It's a fuzzy edge. <laughs> now guys, listen, I'm going to move the table out. If you notice, all of our pipe cleaners are wired together. That makes it really easy for me to clean up and hand out and it keeps things organized. So. If you see a color you want, you want red, put your hand, one hand on the top, take your pipe cleaner and just pull it out. Okay? That's what we're going to do to keep everything nice and neat. Um, I have little cute tips. A lot of times we use these for paint and glue. But if you notice on this crazy guy, I thought they would make really neat little spikes, little rounded spikes. So these also cut with scissors. You can, if you want wooden sticks for legs or for little spikes, you can cut off the wooden ends or you can cut off the tops and have a Q-tip. There are lots of different size wiggle eyes. Some are old, so they're kind of yellowed, but that's kind of cool. It might make it look like a grumpy, mean sea creature, right? And there are different sizes, so you can look through and find the same size, or you can give your creature two different size eyes if you wanted to make it look silly. Um, I showed you the beads. Twisty's wire. Twisty's wire is really fun because it already comes colored. You can also cut it with scissors. You can shape it into zigzags. You can take it around something like a pencil or a stick and you can make coils. You can put it around a popsicle stick and make zigzaggies. Right? So again, this cuts, you don't have to use a big long piece. You know, if you're wrapping it around, you don't have to keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and make it look like a mummy with wire, right? You just cut how much you want. The rest we'll use for a different project. Do you guys have any questions? No. So what you're going to do, we're not going to push. There's enough shells for everybody. We're going to take our time. Um, our helper is going to give you clay if you want clay. You are going to come up to see me if you think you need glue. Uh, because we're working on the carpet. We don't want glue messes on the carpet. And I do have hot glue, which I will use or an adult can use. That makes things stick faster. Oh, it's talking about sticking. How many of you have used these fun styrofoam peanuts before? They come. What's cool about these? They're fuzzy. They're fuzzy? Well, they're squishy. I can take this and I can squish it into any shape I want. So I made legs for this guy. I squished it into little feet. But the other cool thing is, is when you get them wet, they stick. They've got some glue in them. So you can stick them on top of each other. You can stick them to the shells and the shapes. Um, the only thing is you can't use a lot of water because guess what? I wanted to experiment with them. This is what it looked like. This is what it ended up when I used too much water. Oh boy. Not cool. <laughs> so if you want this end to stick, 
I will give you a damp sponge and you just brush it on the damp sponge and then you stick it. Mm -hmm. Just have you used these before? What's that? Oh, you just did your head. Okay. All right. So are we ready to start? Yes. Okay. Here's another crazy, crazy creature. I didn't finish her yet, though. I can't decide what to do with the mouth. I couldn't decide whether to put a little creature in it or not, so I just stuck some wiggle eyes on the outside and called it good. But we had fun playing with these. Um, here's another crazy one. Right? Yeah, that's really crazy. So we're going to have fun with these today. We're going to use our imaginations. And why are we creating sea buddies? What are they going to remind us? Um, to keep the ocean clean. Awesome. So nice. I'm going to let you pick a shell. We're going to move this out so that our shorter Careful. people there you go. good. So that our shorter friends can walk on both sides and they don't have to reach over to get their pipe cleaners. I'm going to ask you guys to stand up and move over. We're going to move this table down. And remember, I am an art teacher, so if you're not sure how to use something or you're, you have an idea but you don't know how to do it, make sure you ask me questions. That's why I'm here to help. Okay? All right, you guys. How about we get in a line, guys? Come on over this way, get in a line. And then, Ben, if you could just excuse yourself and go right in and help them out. Thank you. You gotta wait. You gotta get up to your brother. You want this plate? Say thank you. as you want. So as you're working and everybody else is starting to sit down, 
if there's something you change your mind or you need more of something, please come back up and get more. And then the things you don't use will collect if you don't want to use them.
No, we're gonna wait for school.